So I listen to music 24-7. Yeah. So I think, uh, like, subconsciously, music has just always been something that's influenced my work. Whether I'm doing a piece that is directly, you know, inspired by a song that I'm listening to or something I'm listening to or whether or not, or, like, maybe the flow of, like, a comic I wanted to kind of read as if it's a song or something like that. What's good, Malik? Welcome to the Music Shop interview. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. Doing well. All right, man. Awesome. So, uh, let's let's dive into this uh, first. I met you at VCU. Uh, well, not only at VCU. I know you went to VCU. I met you online years ago. Um, you've been doing illustrations for a long time. Um, can you tell us kind of how your love for illustration started? Yeah. So, um, I actually, I've always had a passion for art since uh, very, very young. Uh, I think I first started uh, dabbling in art around maybe like two or three when I started like holding yeah. a pencil. Uh, so I've always been into drawing, uh, specifically cartoons. I was really heavy into like drawing Dragon Ball Z, uh, like in grade school and stuff okay. like that. Uh, but then um, I got to high school and I decided to really kind of take on um, the, the art, the artist journey. Uh, and I went to a school that had a center for the arts. So I was really like kind of learning all the traditional and technical skills that it took to really be a, a artist. Mm -hmm. And I was able to combine that with my passion for cartoons and just like wanting to see my visions come to life. Yeah. And so, yeah, I've always, the passion for art has always been there and I just kind of really decided to hone in on it the older I got. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what did, what did you go to VCU for? I went to school, I went to VCU for kinetic imaging and communication arts and in layman's terms. I was about to say, break yeah, it down. Yeah, layman's terms, there you go. Uh, it's digital media and illustration and design. So kinetic imaging in capture, or encapsulated uh, video editing and production, sound design, animation, both 2D and 3D, and exper like ex I guess like experience, experience or, okay. or some it, environment. It, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot of things. Yeah. It was a lot of things, but it was really uh, tied into like the digital realm and really uh, like working with um, like computers and using. The internet to kind of create work okay. so uh i first that was what i first decided to study and then halfway through that i realized i kind of wanted to learn more about what i actually had a passion for which yeah. is drawing and yeah. so i picked up another major and i ended up picking up uh, another year of school so it was okay. five years versus four um and co communication arts was where uh i really learned more about illustration and uh, a little bit about graphic design okay uh, we learned about typography and okay. um, like color theory and just painting and figure drawing and all the all the really like technical awesome stuff. yeah technical stuff mm -hmm. yeah yep um so in, in that journey um uh, you said you kind of picked up your uh, again for your love for like illustration and stuff like that um it when did you so let's let's tell the people who may not know about you you kind of have like your own style of illustration right um. I think it's really cool. I really think the the most distinct part is always the eyes. Appreciate you do a really cool job with the eyes. Um, I've studied that for you know a long time. Um, so what what kind of brought that style into play? Yeah. So again, my love for cartoons. Um, I think when most people view my work, I think it reminds them a lot of like Family Guy and Rick and Morty um, and kind of those type of. You know, fun, fun, fun yeah, yeah, right. Uh, fun, but it, but topical and 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 to a point, some type point, some so was serious as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, like style wise, I think I just kind of, I've always, like growing up, like learning how to draw. It, it was a lot of like copying what you see. Yeah. So it was like, all right, well, I enjoy watching. I enjoy watching Family Guy and South Park and all those type of things. So I think. 
it was just like subconsciously like my vision worked the most or the best kind of like piecing together just things that I've like picked up okay so I think like I mean I don't like <laughs> I don't purposely like try to make work that looks like a specific style of uh of work but I think that's just kind of what it's picked up over okay. the uh, over the years and now I'm kind of honing it and developing it and like further making it my own yeah um there's nothing wrong with being inspired man yeah no yeah. not at all not at all a lot of people hate to admit that they're inspired by something it's like how do you think the you know the world goes around you know what right. I'm saying like we're all inspired by each other um that's really dope um so I've seen you go viral multiple fucking times multiple times I mean, it, it's it's insane. Um, almost every day now, you know, you're getting tons of retweets, getting tons of shares. Um, you know, people commenting and stuff. Uh, the first time you went viral, um, can you speak on that? Do you remember that? Ooh, the first time I went viral. Okay, so I think I want to say this was maybe 2015. Um, it was the t- I want to say it was the time uh, when What a Time to Be Alive came out with that Drake and Future project, and okay. I had done some like some fan art around that, and mm-hmm. I remember that going viral because someone on Twitter like kind of they stole it and like retweeted it and claiming it is theirs, and so like VCU like the whole there was a whole follow train thing that was going on when we were in school, and yeah. So, like, while I was gaining followers just based off, like, from the VCU follow training, so when they saw that, everybody who followed me was like, nah, that's this dude's work. Yeah. So they started, like, pushing my work and, like, bashing the person who was, like... Frankly, <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah, and so I think that was the first moment, or I be- if I can remember correctly, that was the first moment where I was like, oh, I'm going viral. Yeah. Like, crazy. <laughs> Wish it could have been for better circumstances, but right, right, it, right. but it opened up a floodgate for you, um, oh, and it opened up a, a platform where people and that's that's cool too. Is like people understood that that was your work, mm-hmm. and you know that that says something in itself. Um, so I wasn't going to go on this topic, but since we're here, um, you know, in the art world, there's a lot of uh, inspiration, as we said before, but there's a lot of theft. There's a lot of uh, I guess for a uh, lack of better words, copycatting, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. How, do, how do you feel about that? I mean, I hate it. Yeah. I, I absolutely hate it. Um, I understand people are going to try to get how they live. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, under, I mean, some people, they just, they're just not considerate. Um, but yeah, I absolutely hate like copying and because um, it, it just, I don't know, it's like hard earned work. And yeah. like hours and time and like brain power and energy just put into this thing for someone else to uh you know just easily take it and i and i understand how easy it is to do it being that one like if you're working on the internet it's really easy to just either screenshot or just save to your phone yeah but i feel like a lot of artists or most artists would hope that there's some sort of like common like morale where it's like mm-hmm. okay like dude don't I know if you think it's cool, I appreciate that, but please don't take it. At least ask. Yeah. Um, because the worst someone can say is no. But I don't. I mean, I don't know. Like people are gonna do what they're gonna do. So I hate it. Um, I wish I could stop it. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. But uh, well, I mean, like you said, we live in that age where like you post your work, and I can easily save it to my phone. Mm-hmm. It, you know, you post it on Twitter. It's basically the world. And I do have a, I do have a, um, an appreciation for, you know, like obviously the originators. Mm -hmm. Um, but we also at the point where like, I feel like once you share your art with the world, whether it be music, whether it be, you know, Mm -hmm. illustrations or, uh, digital art, you know, of any sort, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's kind of like everybody's now, you know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? And that's where it, where that it comes a little tricky because you're, you obviously want the exposure that helps you lead to get different clients, build your fan base, build your uh, your your business and everything. But at the same time, it's risky because now you've literally given your art out to, to the world. Um, do you feel, do you hold back certain pieces from the internet 
and it, because of that, uh, I don't want to say fear, but uh, that concern? Um, actually, yeah. yeah. I think about that all the time, actually. Because uh, my mom is always like, yo, you need to get yourself copyrighted or copywritten or whatever the proper term is. Like, you need to get yourself trademarked, you need to get yourself licensed and just like, you know, secured. And so that thought is always in the back of my mind because I, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'll see it like when, when, them, when, pieces go viral, I'm just like, dang, it'd be really cool if I could have gotten that, like, properly secured, because I, I already know, like, once something goes viral, someone else has already, like, taken that and has probably made something with it, like, um, there's a piece that went viral, the NBA Youngboy mm-hmm. piece, uh, people have started, like, apparently that's, like, resurfaced on Instagram somewhere, and people have been, like, t- uh, tagging me in the post, and... So I'm just like reading through the comments just to see what people are saying. And somebody like I read some comment that was like, Yeah, I have a sticker of this. I'm like, who is making stickers of my shit? Like, yeah. it's it, so and, and you're not saying obviously you're not seeing a, a percentage of that. No, not at all. Not at all. Okay. Not at all. Yeah. And so it's it, it's really interesting, like this this artistry is it's a it's like a balance you kinda have to have with being an artist mm-hmm. and being a uh, I guess a business person because like you were saying, like once you relinquish it to the world, it's kind of free game. Yeah. So the artistry, like the artist in me is like, that's fine. You know, as long as people are able to see it, that's mm-hmm. like you said, it's more exposure, whether yeah. I'm getting monetary, uh, like gain from, yeah, yeah. gain from it or not, like it's still putting my, my name or my presence. Yeah, it's or, like putting your energy out in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the universe. Yeah. Yeah. And then at the same time, it's like, fuck. Damn, that's a bad. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm st- I still gotta pay rent. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Nah, so I, I totally get that, man. I totally a, get that. It's a constant back and forth that I, I try to balance out, or I try to, I try to duke out. I think it's a. I don't want to. Th- I don't want to say that it's a never ending battle because hopefully that battle comes to an end at some point. But yeah. for right now, I feel like at where I'm at and like the age that I'm at and like the experience that I, that I have and that I'm hoping to gain. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know, I'm just kind of enjoying the ride of, you know, the push and pull. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's part of the journey. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Producers go through it. Rappers go through it. uh, You know, so it's it's part of the art industry. I mean, a lot of, I think, was it uh, um, great artists create and then, uh, or good artists create and then great artists steal. Yeah. So, you know, uh, yeah. (laughs) I mean, it's like a universally known (laughs) thing. Um, so we uh, part of this, this stuff that I've seen you release lately um, uh, has been that you've been starting a cartoon series. Yes. All right. Yeah. yeah. So um, you, uh, I've seen you uh, elevate even in your drawings. Um, I remember at one point you were you were using an Intuos uh, Intuos tablet. Mm-hmm. You're using Procreate now, mm-hmm. maybe uh, Affinity. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Tell me about the progression, because the those type of tools now are making it possible to do yeah, some things yeah, like yeah. this. Tell me about the how you've seen like some of the progression and the technology directly correlate to like how you work. That so yeah. yo, it's it's crazy what they about you know what they say about how money is really like money is really all it takes to make your dreams come true. Yeah. Like uh, um, I uh, when I graduated college in 2019 I uh, I had taken that time off you know between like I guess that summer break yeah. between like school and the real world that really weird like grace period yeah um I had taken that time to just kind of figure out what I wanted to do um had no idea what I wanted to do but I was already doing the art thing like my freelance stuff so uh I was just sticking out with the uh the tablet for the longest the Intuos tablet but then I secured a job in uh, in DC, and so from there I was like, okay, this is my chance to make money for an iPad because I remember when I was working at the van store during college, I would always have to pass like the Apple Store and Short Pump to uh, get to work, and so sometimes I would stop in there and just like mess around on the iPad. And I'm just kidding myself like, yo, I'm gonna get one. I'm gonna 
to get one of these, whether or not, like, it's a I know problem. your struggle. Yes, yes right. <laughs> it, not to cut you off, but yeah, yeah. it's an investment. I mean, a, a thousand plus dollars on one tool. Mm-hmm. I mean, you see man over here, like, I, I protect it like it's a child. Like, it, you know, I, it, it, because it, it's almost like a computer, but it's so much more when you're doing this type of work. So exactly. um, I definitely, like, bro, it took me some while. Like, because even when you get the money, you're still like, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, a couple thousand on this. Like, uh, yeah, man. So, yeah, um, yeah my bad. Continue, no, you're man. Good. Yeah. Um, and your your point about having the money, I always keep this thing that I get. I, I guess Jay Z said it. I think Jay Z said it, but he said if you can't afford it twice, or if you can't buy it twice, you can't afford it. Mm. And so I always keep that in mind when I'm buying things that I'm investing in. And so uh, when I when I got my job in DC, I moved up to Maryland, and that's where I started my venture from Richmond. Okay. Um, and so I worked, saved up the money to get an iPad. And so when I got the iPad, I was like working my full time job while also doing freelance, like while like on the clock, just like any downtime I had, I was like, all right, let me just make a couple, um, you know, some some money to at least make the money back that I spent buying the iPad. Yeah. So I can kind of get this uh this art life going. Um, so that was going until I quit my job in August of 2020. Um, and then from there, I was like, all right, we're doing this art thing full fledged. So now I work primarily off my iPad. I still have a, I have a MacBook Pro that I work on as well, but it's really on its last legs. So I'm saving up money to get a new MacBook Pro um, a Cintiq, which is like a bigger, like a professional, like drawing tab. It's like a whole. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. it's, so it's I'm huge. One of those, yeah. and like some some art programs that I need to really push cool. my uh, cartoon series, like to the next further. level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like it, and it's crazy because I'm trying to do as much as I can with what I have, but it's just frustrating because it's like I can literally see how much more I can get done if I had these things yeah. right here, but I'm. Just, Yo, tell me about it, bro. <sighs> tell, I mean, we're sitting in the room right now, and while I, I took a behind-the-scenes photo while you're talking and everything, and I'm thinking, like, damn, I really need two more lights right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like it, it, it crazy. I have another soft plate, but I need another one of these lights. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it, it's it, that's what I don't think a lot of people um, look into, right? They think that some of this stuff is just created out of thin air. They don't understand like the investment you have to put in initially mm-hmm. so that you can get the best results on the other end. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like yep. Procreate will take you to one level, you know what I'm saying? But it's not vectorized. So you gotta figure out how to vectorize exactly. it in another exactly. program. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, it, I, I, I get your struggle, man. Yes, and, yes. and I think a lot of artists will too. You know what I'm saying? It might not be the same exact things, but you know, as a rapper, you wanna you gotta pay for beats, you gotta pay for studio time, you gotta pay to, you know, the, for the music video, all for somebody online to tell you that it's trash. Right, and, and, right. And, and then, then oh my yeah, gosh. and it might not even be, but that might be, somebody might have the balls to go out there and say it, and then that's the, the narrative on, on your career. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And no, uh, really- yeah, and it's, a, it's definitely a, a plight, you know what I'm saying, that a lot of, uh, artists in general have to go through so i have mad respect for music artists and what they do because yeah. it's it's it, it's very scary putting yourself out there like that like i think musically or like just putting like having your voice mm-hmm. and your words and like you like having audio or sound of you out there for viewers or listeners to like take in a critique I yeah. think that is very ballsy like that's and it's, a, it's so subjective right cause right. like you can almost always tell when like the illustration is good right mm-hmm. As, you know it's not like one way to do it but there's like that's either good or something you know it's not right, really right, good right. you know what I'm saying and then you you know with music you can never there's no real there's so many yeah variables there's so yeah. many variables yeah. and everybody has different tastes and what they like yes. it's so yeah yeah I really don't like the I like the idea of Drake just always making hit after hit I don't I don't understand that like how do you know what's I, I get myself in trouble a lot because I'm a Drake stan you know what I'm saying <laughs> um, I get a lot of heat. Drake is the man yeah Drake but is. 
it, what he does, it, it, and I think that's why a lot of more musicians respect him than maybe regular people, because like to do what he does is like damn near impossible. Actually, it, it, it is impossible. It's, it's, <laughs> it's so crazy. The only reason it's possible is because he's literally doing it. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. Like, <laughs> um, so, you know, it, it's it's crazy to think about that, man. Like, yeah, um, um, but I, I'm glad that you said that. Uh, and that actually is going to tie me into, uh, you know, we are the music shop. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our basis is in the music. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, I've seen, one of the things I've seen you go viral over and over again is with uh, your love for Tyler, the creator. Yeah. Y'all you know, have yeah. like, you have seen a, a great connection with his music um, and you oft, often captured like very iconic moments in his career. Nice. And, and they're dope, you know, so they're super dope. Um, and you said he, he's actually reposted some of your stuff before? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, has he reposted? I think, okay, so I know he's liked my stuff. Okay. Um, there was a time where uh, he had come to Richmond um, in 2015. Okay. Uh, he had performed at the National, and I had made stickers. Okay. Um, I had thrown them on the stage. It Smart. was this whole. It was this whole crazy experience. Like I one, I thought I recorded it. I guess my phone had like tweaked and yeah. it didn't get shit. But worst feeling. The worst feeling yeah. ever. But like it was like this situation where the stickers had landed behind one of the speakers, and so I was like, fuck. He's not going to see them. And so some of the people up front, like, they, I got their attention. And so, like, we were just like, yo, like, he had uh, his own Jasper on stage. But yeah. So we were like, yo, Jasper, look at the speakers. And so yeah. we got him. And then, uh, yeah, uh, I tweeted Tyler later that day or that night or the next day or something. Yeah. I was just like, yo, did you get my stickers? And he said, yeah. And, um, you know, I was, I was like, oh, shit. That's, that's dope. dope. Yeah. That's a great feeling. So I've always just, um, I've always been a big fan of his, uh, when I first got introduced to him in like, I want to say like the ninth grade. Yeah. Uh, it was when like Yonkers had first like dropped and uh, stuff. So I was like, oh. took the game by storm. Yeah, exactly. And, and he and he's he's elevated every you know every time he's released since then. Exactly. So exactly. Yonkers still might be my favorite song. Maybe not because of just the song, but mm -hmm. like that moment. He really transformed like hip hop. It was in, next in level. A, yeah, in a big sense. It was next level. Yeah. I, um, from there, I was just like, oh, yeah, Tyler's the GOAT. And in high school, everybody said I looked like him. So I was like, oh, that's even cooler. Like, yeah. I look like somebody who I heavily You idolize, yeah. yeah. And so, um, I don't know, I just I like this hustle and his mindset about just being able to do whatever you want to do and mm -hmm. just making, you know, making it work. Yeah. And so um, I just really, like, uh, I guess, like, embody that. And so, yeah, I'm just out here making what I love to do work for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, diving deeper into that, like, um, you know, Music Shop, we're very big about indie music, you know, indie movements. Um, it, how much do you, does, like, the hip-hop aspect of music, like, inspire you in your work? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you think it's, like, a heavy influence on what you do? Um, Definitely. Yeah? Yeah, I, um, because I listen to music. 24-7, yeah. so I think, uh, like, subconsciously, music has just always been something that's influenced my work, whether I'm doing a piece that is directly, you know, inspired by a song that I'm listening to or something I'm listening to, or whether or not, or, like, maybe the flow of, like, a comic, I wanted to kind of read as if it's a song or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, music definitely plays a huge part in, uh, in my artistry, um, mainly because uh, everybody, for the most part, enjoys music. Yeah. So it's so it's really easy to connect with people if you're creating things that they already love. Yeah, or you know they can relate to. So for me, yeah, it's like I'll just make something. I'll I'll come up with an idea or a visual for maybe like a song that doesn't have a music video. Out there, yeah, or something that. It, that could be like a funny skit that the song could like tie into or something. Yeah. And then I'll illustrate that and they're like, yo, that's freaking genius. Dude. Yeah. And you've recreated some like cool album covers. I saw the one you did for Al Dom. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, and he's from 757. Yeah. Um, so that was really cool to see that too. And, and then him like, you know, also retweeting it and, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, and that album cover was fire. Bro, whoever, it was so fire. Yeah, whoever was a creative director for that, shout out. Shout, shout out to, to, to yeah. Aaron. 
Yeah. 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 That was a that was a dope uh, album cover in general, and then I think like again, you just recaptured it in your own style, and it, you know it's just it's, it's really unique and really cool. Adds a whole nother. I mean, he could drop a deluxe version with that. You know what I'm saying? Like no. That. Yeah. Yeah. For real, yeah for so real. it was really cool to see that. Um, so, um, what do you have any um, indie artists in like VA that you listen to currently? So I do listen to Al Dom. Uh, heavy right now, I, I do have his project and with heavy rotation. Okay. Um, I listen to Mutant Academy. Okay. Um, I definitely enjoy what what they're doing. Uh, Fly Anakin, um, Big Kahuna OG, Hindi yeah. Low, uh, Monday Night. Oh, I mean, I mean everybody. They they know who yeah, Mutant yeah. Academy is. Everybody, everybody knows who they are. Doing, yeah. Putting on fire. Um, I'm gonna list all the homies. <laughs> uh, I listen to. Hans, half cab, jab, half cab, jab. Okay. Let me get that. I, I, I half just, cab, I, jab, okay, so I just found out him recently um, through the interview I did with Alex. Word. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really going yeah, to go yeah, check yeah. this guy out because I, I hadn't heard about him from before then. Word. Yeah, yeah. then I heard. Yeah, fired. the last two interviews I've done, both of y'all have mentioned him, so that's really cool. Yeah, he's the homie. I definitely, yeah. I, I definitely listen to his music heavy. And, uh, Shay's you fake as me. Yeah. From seven. He got he got listed in um Alex's top three. Word. Yo, yeah, yeah he yeah. did. Yeah. yeah. I listen, yo, he he makes some great music. Yo. Awesome. I don't know how he does it, but it, it I think he really embodies the I don't wanna say the seven five seven sound, but mm-hmm. when I listen to his music I instantly think of the Neptunes and Pharrell. Okay. And I'm like, oh wow, this sounds like Virginia. Like yeah. And I, I, it sounds like Virginia. That's what I'm saying. Cool. That's yeah. really dope. Because a lot of people say Virginia doesn't have a sound uh, yet. I, I think I there's think a sound. I think, I think there's, there's a, sound. a sound. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a sound. I I believe that I could kind of tell who's from what area now. Like mm-hmm. I, I think I'm starting to hear like a seven five seven sound and a Richmond sound mm-hmm. and maybe like a Nova sound. But in general, I do think Virginia has a sound. Yeah. Like, I think it, it's a lot to do with the drums and the musical production choice that it really starts the sound. But I agree with you. I think there's a sound. It might not be definable, like in words, mm-hmm. but like like you said, when you hear it, you're like, I know where he's from. You know right, what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah. Um, so uh, if you want to keep listening some more, you're you're more than welcome to. I'm sorry, I cut you off. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh oh my gosh, uh, Flexico. I listen to Flexico. Okay. And. Uh, the green and gold, like the whole green and gold group. Uh, so, uh, oh my gosh. Is that Sega in there? It is, yes. Yeah. It's Sega and Flexico and uh, Bando. Okay. Like that, yeah, I listen to that collective or, uh, I listen to everybody. Well, I, I think I do. I don't know. That's a lot uh, of people. You've covered a lot, of, a lot of people, yeah. Um, I just started listening to Baby Sosa okay. recently. I think she's from VA. I'm pretty sure she's from VA. Okay. Baby Sosa and Lex Gibson. She's okay. from the 75, I believe. Okay. She has some pretty dope tracks out. I'm glad that you named some female artists. I don't think that they get as uh, as much notoriety as obviously as a male, male artist. But that was no, really yeah, cool. That was really cool, man. Um, so. Um, have you worked with any of these artists in particular? Um, I've worked with my boy Hans. We have two, um, not two. I we have a what do we have? We have a track together. Um, but he and I, we we like every time we hang out, we kind of work on something. You know, okay. Like just like for fun, or whether we're like trying to put something out. So you but, that's when you're because uh, I was gonna get to that uh, mm-hmm. late, but you, is that you producing it? Yeah. Okay. So so um, he and I have a track out. Um, on a project that I that's like my my album uh, where I produce and like I have a verse on it so okay, cool it's a uh, I kind of I try to get into like the writing and like the vocals but uh, I I don't know M- music is is weird because like again I back to like the whole idea of being like really brave and like as a as a music artist like for me I know that my strong suit is in visual art. So okay. with me putting out art or like promoting myself as a visual artist is no problem because yeah. I know I got that in the bag. Yeah. But for music, I haven't been, I haven't, I haven't like made music for that long. I think I started in 2019, but I've always had a musical background. 
like yeah. I play piano growing up and stuff like that. And so now as I'm like trying to like just grow and elevate, at first I started as a producer and I was like, all right, I just want to be known as like an artist from Richmond who just makes sounds for people, mm. for artists. But then I started, like I got a mic and I was like, oh, I kind of like rapping. Yeah. Like, like writing was super fun. I enjoy writing and then yeah. I like the idea of singing with autotune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so um, I've kind of, it's kind of developed into like this artistry. Uh, I go by Radford, uh, just my last name, without mm-hmm. the syllable, I mean, without the uh, the vowels. Okay. So R-D-F-R-D. Um, and so I've been able to get a track with Hans, uh, my friend Ronnie Lux. Okay. Uh, she's a great artist from RVA. Okay. Um, her and I have a song together. And yeah, I'm hoping to get, oh, I forgot my boy Johannes. Yo, there's a lot of people. Johannes, yo, yo, Johannes has been dope for a bro, long Johannes time. Johannes is the man. Yeah, he's been dope he's for a long time. Man. Yeah. And um, my boy Mooch, but he, I mean, hey, yeah, if you Mo- don't get your stuff mixed from Mooch, bro, you're tripping. <laughs> you're tripping. Yeah, Mooch, uh, Mooch, he's been working uh, for a long time as well. Yeah. Um, I know, I've know i known them for shit, uh, I don't know, 10 years now? You know right, what I'm right. so, yeah. yeah, bro, they're the boys, yeah. man. They're, they're great people. Yeah, um, so how, So I, I, I didn't know that you rap, so that's a good uh, je, you know, little, little Easter egg in here. Um, how do you feel being like kind of at the beginning stages, rapping with people like Hans or... Or, you know, even be, you know, possibly making tracks with Johannes, if that's mm-hmm. somebody that you have, you know, who's been doing music for such a long time. Yeah. Whereas you're really establishing, like you said, the, the yeah. visual arts. Mm-hmm. And that would be kind of like them stepping in your world and like, right, right, right. You, know, you know, trying to yeah. draw, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, like how do you feel so, about that? Do you feel intimidated? So I... It's a it's a it's an interesting mix. I don't want to use the term intimidated, I, but I do. It's a it's intimidation, but it's more so just respect. Like, yeah. It's like I respect your artistry so much that I don't even want to come with my like little shit. Yeah. <laughs> You're like yo, can you like get on this for me? Because I understand what it's like. Yeah. But at the same time, I kind of hope that like our like in person relationship kind of like. And just like how we vibe out, like if we're hanging out and it's like, and I just happen to be playing some sounds and like, I don't know, you don't want to start freestyling. I'm like, yeah. yo, like, can we record that? And it just be something that we make um, or something like that. So yeah. it's a, it's definitely, a, it's very interesting. I I like doing it um, with the homies, especially those who seem like into my like work. Like if, yeah. I, if some, if some friends are like, yo, I like, some friends will be like, they'll genuinely fuck with me. Like with uh, what I have going on, they're like yo, keep going. Um, and then some are like yo, that's dope. And then uh, you never hear either. Right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like welcome to the life. Yeah, man. Right, welcome right, to right. the life. Yeah. So um, I, it's 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 interesting. Um, cause I it's like I don't want to overstep my boundaries by asking, but at the same time, how else am I supposed to like? Yeah, you you, know? you grow. Yeah. 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 I mean, I remember. Uh, I, you might not even remember this, but I remember years ago when I first started doing graphic design. I really, I, you know, I'm not a great illustrator, but I went to learn. You know what I'm saying? And um, um, I asked you about the Intuos, you know, uh, pad, mm-hmm. and you, you were, you know, you were open. You're like, yeah, this is what I use, and I went and got one. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, right, like yeah, right, right. that's how it starts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So you know, now I'm working. Yeah, now I'm working on Procreate and everything, and you know, it's 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 that's how you level up. If you're mm-hmm. if you're gonna be scared to Enter in, or if you're gonna be timid and not, you know, enter in this realm and not want to ask questions, you're never gonna grow. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, whether it be like, what YouTube videos do you use? To, you know, when you, you know, what channels do you go search when you need to learn about a program mm-hmm. or something like that? It's so many different questions, and you can't be scared to ask, man. You know what I'm that's saying? Facts, so, that's facts. you know, that's part of bravery too. You know what I'm saying? That's part of that ba- bravery. Um, so, um. And, and, and I wanted to tap on something else too when you were talking about doing music I think a lot of these when you get into these creative fields mm-hmm. they often overlap you know what I'm saying and and it's hard not to be interested in it and mm-hmm. it might not be something that you do for your living you know what I'm saying like you might not be a rapper for your living yeah. it might not even be a d- desire of yours but there's no there's no rule or law that says hey Malik just because you're great at drawing doesn't mean you can't have fun and try to you know make some music too exactly you know what I'm that's, that's how I look at it yeah. um, 
I definitely don't expect to like blow up or yeah, anything yeah. off of my music. I just wanted to make stuff and have it available. So yeah. I mean, I have uh, I have a lot of my catalog like available to stream. Um, if anybody, you know, if it, it's, Fuck it's it, man. there, you hear the music shot. It's there if you want to check it out. R E F R D. Um, any streaming service platform. Yeah, yeah. any DSP uh, that you prefer to listen to, it's on there. Um, and that's your production or your production and it's, rapping? It's, it's a mix. Okay, so, cool. uh, I, have, I have a lot of music on there. I have, like, I think three albums in, like, five EPs. It's, it's a mix okay, uh, cool. of, like, vocal stuff and instrumental stuff. But, yeah, I am... Um, what program are you using to make your beats? I'm using Logic. Okay. Yeah, I'm using Logic. I uh, I wanted I have experience. You're an Apple guy through and through. I am. Yeah. Guy through through. <laughs> I um I have experience at Ableton because I had to use it in my sound design class in BC. Ableton's so, great. Yeah, yeah, I wanna I wanna get that, but it's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> and so and I haven't found um you know a good uh a good source. Yeah, I understand what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. So <laughs> so um. I'm sticking with uh with Bootleg life, life you know? baby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you understand. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. So uh yeah, it's uh it's been cool. Again, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to get big off of this. It's just something else to channel my creativity when I'm not able to channel it visually. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, and um so uh I want to tap into one more thing um before you get off uh before you get you know, get out of here and everything. Um what's next for Malik? You asked a golden question. <laughs> I literally asked myself that like this morning. So I know that my animated series, um, the the main one I'm working on right now is Parkman. That's uh, the main series I'm working on. So that's that's not the turtleneck series. That's not the turtleneck okay, series. That's the that's like the second idea that I'm going to be working okay. on. Well, I'm, I'm working on both at the same time. But, yeah, I know how it is, man. Uh, yeah, but you. I'm more further developed with uh, apartment. So, yeah, the goal is to bring that to life. You know, continue to grind out doing freelance work because I don't plan on going back to work. Like, working at 9 to 5. Yeah, working yeah. at 9 to 5. If I have to, if I absolutely have to, I will. But for now, I don't see that. Yeah. Uh, in the foreseeable future. Yeah. Um, so the goal is to grind it out with the freelance work, save up the money to get the supplies or the equipment that I need mm-hmm. to further uh, flesh out apartment. Once apartment gets off the ground, I'll start like the, I should start now actually, but um, I'll start like the, the, the fundraisers. Or, okay. Yeah. The, yeah. Well, I guess this, this groundwork yeah. is like the, the fundraising. So okay. I can kind of, get money to f- bring my other ideas to life. Yeah. So hopefully I'll have like this, I guess studio in a sense. So like this, like this entity that is my animation work mm-hmm. that I like tie to my personal brand or just who I am as an artist. Yeah. So hopefully I'll just be like, like an Aaron Magruder, like a Boondocks, or just like one of the, like a, a Carl Jones, uh, who worked on Boondocks and like Black Dynamite and stuff like yeah. just making cartoons. Yeah, um, yeah. That's, 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 that's a legendary guy. Who his name? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, uh, before before we get out of here, um, um, tell them the name of uh, this uh, series one more time. It's called Part. Yeah, Part. Uh, Do you so want to give them the description of, of it at all? So. I describe it as it says if insecure and regular show had a baby. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's a, there we go. There it is. It's apartment take off the A apostrophe. So apostrophe cool. apartment. Yeah. Cool. All right, and uh, let everybody know where they can find you. So you can find me at Instagram or on Instagram at Malik Radford M A L I K R A D F O R D all one word. It's just my name. You can follow me on Twitter if you want. At your uh, own at your own risk. At, my, at your own risk at uh What Up Art Boy. That's my name, right? Yeah. yeah what, it up is. Art yeah. <laughs> what up Art Boy? Um shop with me at Malik Radford dot Big Cartel dot com. 
and check out my music, your preferred DSP at RDFRD. There you go. Heard it from the man himself. All right, man, this is The Music Shop. I'm OG Illa. This is Malik Rafford, and we're out. Peace.